Good morning, Madam Chair, and congratulations um, on behalf of all of the Alaskans uh, here in the room today. It's an honor to see you sitting here. And, um, and thank you to the other members who braved the weather to come out today on this important issue. Um, I just, as a state senator, I know how these hearings um, can bring you relevance um, and, and can also drain on uh, in, in other areas. So I'm going to try to synthesize a few points down. If I were on your side, what I would want to know. The first thing is you heard from my colleague next to me, Representative Heron. The two of us have been chairing the Alaska Arctic Policy Commission now for the last two years. There's a series of reports that are here for you. They're online. Your staff will have them. And we hope that you'll look to them um, as a resource to guide you in crafting Arctic policy on behalf of the federal government. The most important thing that I want to say to you today is it is Alaska that makes the United States an Arctic nation, but it's all of you and going to take all of you um, to really bring uh, the Arctic into the forefront of federal policy making and efforts uh, in, in infrastructure development. Um, as it's been noted by the chair and, and by you yourself, Senator Cantwell, we're, we're behind. Um, in all the places that I've traveled and visited along with um, Representative Heron, we're the, the one of the eight that's the furthest behind. Um, we're lacking in any deep water ports. Um, we're lacking when it comes to uh, support for uh, spill response. Um, and yet our federal government has taken in over $4 billion in lease uh, returns. And so if I were sitting on your side, one of the takeaways that I would have would be because it affects all of us so greatly, there, there are resources that have been taken in by the federal government, and it's time for us to start investing in, in infrastructure and policies that will move us forward, not just words. Um, these are nice words, these are nice policies, but the actual um, investment of infrastructure is something that I think we'll be looking to you two women um, to lead on. Um, the state has been doing its part. We have uh, a, a fund that has over um, $50 million in, in spill response dollars that are sitting there in case something would happen. Um, we also have one of the uh, greatest, most innovative vessel response tracking systems. And I know you both have seen this. Ed Page, um, Captain Ed Page has presented this. Um, we have been a foremost leader in Arctic logistics and microgrid technology, hybrid wind diesel electric systems, Arctic engineering, and of course the Trans-Alaska Pipeline, the one major Arctic infrastructure project that the world has seen over 40 years now in existence. Great jobs. We've preserved and grown the porcupine caribou herd. Um, we've provided safe, environmentally friendly um, energy to, to America. At one point, 20% of the domestic supply of energy to this country came from that one line. So I just um, want to emphasize that point as well, that it's entirely appropriate that we're here before you today, Madam Chair, in the Energy Committee, the Senate Energy Committee, because the Arctic really is that place that holds America's energy security right there in its in its clutches. Um, between ANWR, between the National Petroleum Reserve of America, and the Chukchi and the Beaufort Sea, we have America's energy security sitting right there. Um, and so those policies are for you as you move forward, but I just encourage us when we do think about the Arctic to remember um, that it was just in 2012 that America was importing over 40% of its um, energy from other foreign countries that don't favor um, our belief in women's rights, our belief in human rights, and in, in many cases our enemies. So that's something for this committee um, as you look at, um, at Arctic policy. Um, the last point that I want to make is the opportunity. Madam Chair, you have labeled the committee hearing today as an opportunity, and that is how we in the Alaska Arctic Policy Commission, 26 commissioners, I want to point out only 10 of them were lawmakers, the other 16 subject matter experts. We traveled for two years all over the state. First day of every meeting was a listening session, and what we heard from Alaskans was opportunity. Um, we've been dealing with climate change, we've been dealing with global war warming for thousands of years, and Alaskans adapt just like we do today. We, we put on our coats and we get out and we muck through it and we adapt. What we don't need are policies that would, might come from the federal government that would hamstring us or make it more difficult for us to adapt. We're looking for partnership and helping 
um, to adapt to that uh, climate change. But as we move forward, the opportunity, the $100 billion worth of private capital that's out there waiting to come into the Arctic, Alaskans are looking forward to that as that next chapter um, for their economy to fill up our pipeline and to uh, develop jobs. So I'm, I'm not going to read into the record our vision statements, our policy statements. They're here for you in these three documents. You're members of a Senate committee. You're fully aware of how you can access those and look at them. I wanted to try to bring a personal face to it as an Alaskan senator, um, what I would be thinking about if I, if I were on your side. And I thank you so much, Senator Murkowski, for having us today. Thank you, and we do appreciate the good work of the commission.